I was renting a snowmobile and it was the first time ever on a snowmobile for me and I had a seizure so I didn't know what was going on my head turned to the left and the eyes were flittering and my girlfriend uh, flagged down a car and called an ambulance and I thought I had an anxiety attack you could and then I was just going to keep going uh, on the snowmobile ride I, and I could have died right there in the you know, out in the woods. And from there, um, they did a uh, x-ray or a scan, and the doctor came back and said that he sees a brain mass. And so obviously I was terrified at that point, and I couldn't even call my parents. Lisa had to do that for me. In many ways, a problem with the brain, particularly if you're talking about a brain tumor, is probably the most frightening thing that anyone can ever hear. We are our brain. In fact, we're defined as being our brain. Um, and the concept that there's a growth in the brain or on the brain that will affect who you are and how you function um, and how you interact uh, uh, leads to an emotion of fear so the important thing is to give them the feeling that, they, that we understand what's going on, we, they, we understand what they're going through, and we give them hope more than anything else. Right, as far as, as, as brain tumors go, the tumors is not really judged by the size of it, it's more based on the location. But he had an excellent surgical result to begin with. It was uh, safe, it was well removed, didn't hurt him as far as any symptoms after surgery. Um, and the prognosis was quite good. Now, admittedly, we don't tend to use the terms benign and malignant for these tumors. Everything is gray, a spectrum in between. We talk about low-grade tumors and high-grade tumors. Thankfully, his was one of the lower-grade ones. Low-grade, however, is by no means benign. The type of tumor that he has actually has a statistic, a median survival number that's about five years. That's a very malignant process in any other disease type. So while it's a favorable tumor from our perspective, it's still a very serious disease. Jeff had an incredible will about him. Uh, he and his wife were a, a team, a terrific team. Um, of course he needed to be encouraged. All brain tumor patients need to have encouragement. And they call, and sometimes they just want you to listen to them and reassure them that they're doing the right thing, that they're on the road, um, so to speak, and, and that they're, they're going to be okay. So, um, you know, it'd be easy to just uh, give up and say, you know, that's it, I'm done. But I. But I had a lot to hope for. I had a family and I had an incredible team that came together and they worked, I mean, I always felt that they were taking care of me and that whatever happened, they would have something to help my symptoms. Brain tumor patients are different from any other kind of patient because the tumor that they have is affecting who they actually are and that's a pretty serious thing. Um, but knowing that this institution has all of the pieces available to help them uh, makes my job a lot easier. I think most, you know, I was dating, at least when I had my seizure and through the brain cancer, uh, all the surgeries. And I think most women would just take off and say, forget it, I don't want to take care of you for the rest of my life. When I was losing my hair, I said, do you want to wait until I grow my hair back for the wedding? And she said, uh, no, I don't love you for your hair follicles, you know, so. And it's a good thing, because now I'm losing my hair naturally. <laughs> so, um, and my daughter, well, I guess you, you don't understand how to how much you can love a child till you have one. And, and I have uh, the doctors at Henry Ford, the team, to uh, thank for that, for sure. 
I have cancer, but I'm not alone.